beautiful people. This is Matilda and Veronica here for, for Pilates sake. Uh, and today we're going to be looking at standing push down front. So the springs are typically a 3-2, but you can lower those springs um, if you need to. Okay, so let's start. So if you looked at the video about the setup of the chair, we talked about a little bit of the arcing of the paddle. Right. So we know the paddle is going to arc towards us now. So just be aware that the pedal is going to arc towards you, which means you don't want to stand right at the edge of your, uh, the wood with your toes. Give yourself a little bit of space. Otherwise your hands are going to land at your feet. And that's a pretty deep flexion required, almost odd a little <laughs> bit. So give yourself maybe six to eight inches on this chair. Anyways, all chairs are a little bit different. They arc differently and you're in your Pilates V here. So I'm just going to say right from the get go, as soon as you stand almost for anything, but we're going to talk about this right now. You want to root your pelvis down into your feet. Now, in order to do that, you need a soft ish knee and you want to allow your body weight to feel like it's living at the front of the ankle joint slightly rather than pushing back into your shins, right? right? We don't want to hang out there. So you're going to soften your knees and you feel like your shins are almost falling on the front of your foot. And we're going to try and maintain that. All okay. right. So we're going to inhale to float the arms all the way up. And then as you exhale, you're going to flex your spine until you take your hands onto the paddle. Then it's an inhale to allow the flexion of the spine to push the paddle to the floor if you can. And then you're going to exhale all the way back up to the top ish of the closing of the spring. Inhale, paddle goes down and then exhale. You're going to rise that back up again. Now, as you inhale and you push the pedal down, I want you to imagine that the springs are actually pulling the arms back into you. See, there's a little bit of shift I could get from her. It's not the arms that are pushing the pedal down. It's the flexion and the movement of the spine moving forward and down that moves the pedal. And then the up, it's not your rib cage that's rising back up again. It's the pelvis. It's no different than a roll down or a roll up on the mat. Pelvis initiates the movement to bring the spine back up. So you're basically like a slinky going down and then back up again, trying to create more flexion as you go down and potentially on the way back up as well. When you've done about five to eight of them, as you rise up, when you get to the top of the spring, you no longer have springs. You have to take ownership of you through your center as you rise all the way up and then arms float all the way back down again. Okay. okay. Can I add something to that? Absolutely. Okay. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have her do it on this chair. This chair? Yeah. Okay. Two, three. So everything she said, uh, and something I get people to do just because a lot, you know, we get people just like you were saying, they just, they don't use their <clears throat> spine. They just want to push the equipment. And I think this is a great one to, especially when people have difficulty coming off the floor because of necks or maybe a pregnant lady can't roll up. So this is an opportunity for them to find flexion uh, safely as well as a little bit of more so as connection. And I'm going to show you the cue that I give and you can give mm -hmm. me some feedback. Tell me what you think. Sure. Okay. So you go ahead. You float your arms up on your in. Okay. And then she's going to place her hands down onto the paddle, making sure that the heel of the hand, by the way, is not hanging off the edge, that it really Good is more idea. on top. And a lot of times we'll tell people to put their fingers on the wood, kind of like piano fingers, so that they stay more over the wrist joint. And then she's going to get a little bit more weight over onto her arm. So we say like a 50-50. Now, this is what I want you to think, Matilda. Yep. As you're going up and down, think about kind of paninian or drawing the hands and the feet towards each other gently. So as the paddle is going up and down, it feels like you're trying to pull the paddle towards your shins and the shins towards your paddle. Does that give you a little bit more in your psoas, a little bit more in your belly? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a nice way of sort of finding some of that, um, those flexors that we've talked about in other exercises. Uh, and then, yeah, it's like she's trying to slide the floor and the paddle towards each other. And it's not a lot. It's not, not an over recruitment, but just enough to go, oh, wow, those are my flexors. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. Uh, and I do a little cue. And it, again, you guys, whatever works for you. Yeah. For sure. All right. It's that um, same idea. Okay. Right. So as you inhale, you can pull shins and pedal towards each other. But now on the way up, mm -hmm. don't pull the paddle and shins towards each other. Push the paddle forward to root your pelvis. Oh, down. love You're it. Pushing yeah. your pelvis back down onto your feet to assist the pickup. So panini down. Panini down and, and push away. Push up. away. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's cool. Like that. It's kind of nice, right? Because on the way back up again, um, 
because I kind of like it. I like the coming too. from. Sorry. What's that? I, I like the push going forward too. The put, yeah, so yeah I like them both. Nice. I like them so kind of both. Yeah. It's something to definitely play with because I think they're both really, really powerful. Um, awesome. Depending on maybe what it is that you're searching for that day. That this right? gave me more. I felt the push gave me a lot more of that organize, okay. organization at the shoulder, like we did with foot ankle. Yeah. And then the pulling just gave me a little bit more of the, the, the front line. Yeah, the front line. It's yeah. kind of like well, there. That's a perfect way, right? Mm -hmm. The paniniing will give you your front line, and <laughs> the pushing will give you more of your back line. Yeah, I love that? it. Yeah. yeah. And they're both really, really great. Now, both of us can make it all the way to the floor yeah. because we have the flexibility in our hamstrings. That's not always gonna be the case. So please be aware that that's not the goal. The goal is spinal flexion, shoulder girdle organization, softening through the feet, being rooted through the feet. So just go as far down as you know that it's your spine that's actually doing the movement and not your shoulder girdle that's pouring off of your rib cage in order to get to a destination. Like exactly. That. You yeah. talked about right from the get go, getting my shins kind of more over the front of my yeah. ankle. Yeah. Um, you have to maintain that. Yeah. We'll see that a lot where people don't have the bend in their spine. So they'll kind of shift back onto their heels and stick their booty out. Now that's just yeah. that flexing at the hip thing. Yeah. It's not going to hurt you, but you're definitely not working the flexors of your spine yeah. and or uniformly bending the back line. So that was a lot of info. <laughs> okay. So that's it. Thanks Have fun for joining us, you guys. Ciao. Bye.